Welcome to another video in our series on cloud native application development. My name is Nathan Love and I am a senior app dev consultant with Red Hat. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can automate testing of your REST API using a tool called Schema Thesis. This tool is used for testing your web applications that are built with an open API specification. It'll read the spec and generate test cases which will ensure that your application or REST API is compliant with its own schema. The great thing about schema thesis is that the REST service that's being written can actually be written in any language and you don't have to write any code for the test cases. The only thing that you'll need is a valid API schema in a supported format. So to start off, we're going to be using the project, the to-do's project that we've been working on in the previous labs. Now, if you do not have uh, a copy local or you just want to start from scratch, that's fine. We have a new repo available where you can start from for this lab and that'll be available in the lab documentation. So we've got that here. We're going to go ahead and check this out. So we have um, we have our todo.yaml. That's our open API spec that we've been working from in the last few labs. So we're going to go ahead and generate the sources uh, from using that file. That should just take a second. Okay, great. So that's generated all of our uh, model and API files using that spec. So we can go ahead and take a look in IntelliJ uh, at what we've got here. So all the files here in this gen folder, those have been generated using that open API spec. And the only file that we've written ourselves uh, is this to do's API controller. Uh, in the previous labs, we went ahead and stubbed out the get to do's method um, to see what that would look like. So that is all set up and ready to go. So the first thing we're going to want to do next is go ahead and install Schema Thesis. Schema Thesis is actually installed with Python. It's a Python module. And before we actually install Schema Thesis, we're going to install a different module called Virtual Environment. Uh, this provides support for creating lightweight virtual environments uh, in a Python fashion. So this way you have a separated environment for all your dependencies. You don't have to worry about um, messing up anyone else's dependencies on the system. And you don't have to worry about anyone else on the system messing up your dependencies. So I would always recommend this if you're doing any type of Python project to go ahead and install that and use that system. So to install that you use pip which is the Python package installer and we will install virtual env. Alright, so I already have it. but There you go. That's what it would look like. And to activate your virtual environment or to create one, I'm sorry. You go ahead and create one. We'll call this one, um, we'll call it my VNV. So we will say uh, VNV and you call it my environment, my ENV. And so this is going to create a directory here called my ENV with all the required um, files and binaries for your Python virtual environment. To activate this, we're going to type source my ENV bin activate. So now we are within our new Python virtual environment and we can install packages without any type of uh, elevated access. So we'll go ahead and pip install schema thesis. All right, so that's installed uh, schema thesis and we can go ahead and see the uh, simple help options we have here. Um, so we can see that it was successfully installed. So let's go ahead and uh, run the tests. So to do this, there's a couple of different uh, approaches you can take. You can either use a local open API spec or you can also use a remote open API spec. Um, we're just going to do the local for the uh, testing here. So we're going to do a schema thesis run. Uh, we're going to pass it our uh, open API spec there. And then we're also going to pass it the base URL where our application will be running, which is just going to be localhost 8080. Now our application is not currently running, so we should probably go ahead and start that up. So here we can go ahead and start our application using Spring Boot. And this is now running. And so now we can go ahead and run, oh, my mistake, 
typing is important. Oof, we did not do very well there. So you can see we have one one thing passed, which was the uh, get to dos, which is the one that we implemented in the previous lab. But all of our other uh, endpoints are currently failing. So let's go ahead and fix those. Um, so we should be able to come in here and override the methods that we need. So we're going to need to create to do. That would be make sense. Uh, and for now, we're just going to go ahead and stub this out. Uh, we'll return a response entity with a HTV status. Uh, let's just say we'll do a 200. Okay. So just grab this and uh, let's see. Delete. Yep, that sounds like a good thing. I'll just go ahead and return something. Get to do's uh, without a parameter, a path parameter. And uh, updating. Okay, so now we have uh, some implementations. Obviously, these are not uh, working implementations, but they've been implemented, so at least we're being compliant with our schema. So let's go ahead and run the testing again. So we'll restart our server and we will rerun the tests. Green's always a good color. All right, so there you see that Schema Thesis has automatically generated 502 tests for our five different endpoints and they've all passed which is great um, now one thing that I should tell you by default schema thesis is only going to run test cases to ensure that your server is returning uh, status codes that are under 500 so 500 and above that's going to be a fail with the default schema thesis testing however it does offer uh, it does offer some other types of checks, we could take a look at those. If we do um, a run dash dash help, up at the top here we can see there is a flag for the different types of checks. So not a server error, that is going to be the default test. There's also a status code conf conformance to make sure that the status code we declare in our uh, spec is the one that's returned. Content type, so if you uh, specify the return type, as an object, it's going to make sure that that is what's being returned. Uh, we also have response schema, so that's uh, the same kind of thing. Or content type is actually, if it's JSON or XML, response type is going to be if it's an object to make sure that that's the correct type of object. And then we have an all option. So let's just go ahead and rerun our previous command, except we're going to add a dash dash checks and say all. Well, we did not do very well there. So we have uh, not a server error. Those are good. Our content type is good, but it seems that we have some status code conformance issues. So we can take a look at the first one here uh, for the post. Uh, actually, the very first one is the get v1 to do's. So um, it seems that our content type is not good for that one. OK, so if we look back here, <clears throat> at our implementation, quote unquote, of the get to do's, uh, we're not actually returning anything, and it's expecting a list of to do's. So instead of uh, just returning an empty 200, what if we were to return a, a status of 200, but with a body of? Um, an array list of type to do. All right, so let's go ahead and rebuild here. Let's see if that changes our errors. You have to wait till the server restarts, otherwise everything fails. Okay, so now you can see that our uh, get to do's 
schema is now conforming to what we said it would do in our spec. So now we have um, some status code issues here because if we look, we're returning 200, but in our open API spec, we said that it would either be a 201 or a 400. So let's go ahead and change. This is for creating a to-do. should be a 201, not a 200. So we'll go ahead and change that to a 201. It seems that our update should be a 202. So we'll change that to a 202. And our delete should be a 204. So now we have the proper response codes. We'll go ahead and restart our application one more time. Great. So fingers crossed, this time we should be fully conforming to our OpenAPI spec that we've declared. And there we go. Now you can see that we've run a little over 2,000 tests and they've all passed and they were all generated using schema thesis. Uh, in 7.27 seconds. Um, and that is pretty impressive for a tool that requires no actual coding to write tests. Now, Schema Thesis does also offer you um, the ability to add other tests that if you want to manually test something um, that's not in their testing checks, you can create your own Python test that uses the Schema Thesis library. And so we actually have one here we can look at. Now what this is going to do is it's going to use the schema thesis module and it's actually going to call each of our cases, uh, which is each of our endpoints, and it's going to time them to ensure that the time to respond is less than a second. And so to test this, we're just going to use PyTest. And we will input our test case file here. So it's collected all five of our endpoints, and now it's running each of them against our uh, manually declared test to make sure that all the responses are under a second. And there you go. So that way we've been able to easily uh, smoke test each of our test cases. We are also able to make sure that they respond in a timely manner. And um, it was very simple, and we didn't have any issues there, and that was it. So that is uh, a brief overview of Schema Thesis and how it can be used to uh, test your application without, or your REST API without having to do, if you want, no writing of test cases at all. Thank you.